everyone, welcome to this week's AMS Live. It is December 12th and we are going to start out with the issue paid numbers for annuities and IULs. So to start for the week 49 of IULs is John M. 588, Joshua L. 736, Ruth H. 768, Christopher F. 948, Jason L. 1019, Julia G. 4005, Conrad P. 7153, and Todd S. 16,940 with a total of 32,157. And then for 1127 through 124 of issue paid annuities, we have Elvester C. 12,603, Nadine L. 15,000, David P. and Danielle B. 15,473, Shelly M. 21,555, David H. 24,491, Helena V. 30,000, Sharice Y. 31,864, Moises G. 35,764, Euphoma E. 36,650, Frank D, 37,772, Danielle P, David P and Danielle B, 43,218, David B, 43,413, David P and Danielle B, 49,657, Cornell A, 52,000, David L and David P, 52,231, Danielle W, 70,938, Edward P, 100,000, Scott S, 142,500, David P, 145,193, Jane C, 150,000, Will D, 150,000, Euphoma E, 156,419, Denise C and Don S, 182,376, Jack Y and Brittany S, 197,483, Matthew S, 246,000, Spencer F, 276,624, and Clint N, 313,258, with a weekly total of 2,632,492. Great numbers, everyone. And so just uh, one last thing I'd like to mention as we go into the end of the year um, is just last December, the market did drop a bit and a lot of clients ended up losing some money before we were able to get it transferred over to Athene. Um, so that's not necessarily gonna happen this year, but it is good to be aware of um, so that we can protect our clients. And we just wanna encourage you guys to be diligent about getting that money transferred over before the end of the year. If we can do anything to help you, please reach out to us. We can help contact the transfer company, give you advice or just anything you might need. Um, email us at info at FFLAMS.com and let's have a great rest of your year. Good morning, everyone. Sean Ruggiero. Welcome to the Family First Live AMS Live. That's uh, Advanced Market Sales Live. It's where we learn about annuities, IULs, uh, advanced insurance products. They are not complicated. They're easy as long as we understand that they can solve complicated solutions sometimes. So uh, kind of a hybrid here. I have some good FIA training I want to talk to you about. But first, I want to talk to you about a new product that we have and the compensation level that we have on this product. Um, uh, tops in the industry. So as you might know, all of our IUL products at Fan First Life all topped out at 110% compensation. The new Mutual of Omaha IUL Express, that's the IUL Express, now has compensation up to 130%. So you can see here, if you're a 140, you can get a 130. If you're a 120, you're at 110. Okay, so this is on your target premium plus I think about 1% on any overfunding and renewals. So fantastic compensation for what I consider arguably one of the best products in the industry. So let's talk about this uh, FFL IUL Express product. Okay, first off, it's a true table four simplified issue underwriting. So anything down to table four, which is pretty lenient, okay, you could be taking some, uh, some drugs, you could be taking some um, uh, various medications, have surgeries, things of that nature, and still qualify no problem. So anyone down to table four gets standard issue pricing. So it's done within about 24, maybe 48 hours, and it's easy knockout questions, table four simplified issue, just like what you're used to with Term Life Express. 
uh, or with um, uh, term life answers, or excuse me, with um, um, living promise, the final expense product. It's a yes, no, it's easy to understand, and you know based on what diabetic medications, blood thinners, et cetera, et cetera, antidepressants, you name it, there's a knockout list of products that you, uh, uh, of things that are, um, will be allowed and those that won't be allowed. If you have any questions, you can email Kim at FFLAMS.com and she can help you through if you have any questions on that. Uh, the minimum face value is $25,000. Why is that so, value, uh, so valuable? Because we have so many people, agents included, who they want to put a hundred bucks a month into their retirement savings. They're younger, they haven't built up the wealth yet or the income yet to put in five hundred or thousand dollars. But if you put that in, in into a hundred thousand dollar face, minimum face value with some of our other products, it just won't accumulate much cash. Well, now with a minimum face value of twenty-five thousand dollars, there's really no excuse. Everyone can start saving because even a hundred bucks, heck, two hundred bucks a month, that adds up nicely. So that minimum face value is great for tax-free cash accumulation. But the second thing is this. The second thing is it's great for solving for mortgage protection and for final expense. There are some people that are, are applying for mortgage protection that are fairly healthy. They're definitely within table four. And um, we want to give them something that's more permanent, that doesn't end at a certain period of time. We have people who are final expense, and I compared uh, a face value, a $25,000 face value with a um, with someone uh, who is doing a final expense product, and the difference was dramatic. The person, instead of having to pay $140 a month, which is a bit out of their budget, was only paying 88 bucks a month with this product. So, um, you know, you got to take into account compensation, what you're trying to hit, what the targets are, but this is essentially built as a permanent product and you can solve all the way down to $25,000, which allows you to build a lot of cash value for less money than the $100,000, but it also lets you solve for death benefit all the way down to $25,000 and be lower premium or add more death benefit for the same premium versus a final expense product. So be looking at it for those clients that, um, you know, they can have some dings, uh, table four, but uh, if they're healthy enough, they can qualify for this product. Uh, so great for cash accumulation or great for death benefit. And as I said earlier, uh, compensation goes up to 130%. So email kim at fflams.com and she can run any illustrations for you, make sure that you're contracted, etc., etc. All right, next thing I want to talk about has to do with fixed index annuities. All right, so I've showed this before. This is our risk versus reward, what they call the efficiency frontier. So for every portfolio, there is using modern portfolio theory. Modern portfolio theory says that everything has a risk and reward trade-off. What are some examples of things that have no risk? Um, U.S. Treasury bills, okay? Um, a, a Treasury bill has no risk. What will it get you? Or maybe 1%? one and a half percent, 1.8 percent, depending on uh, on the length of the bill or the current pricing. But it has no risk. It's backed by the full faith of the U.S. government. It's always going to pay out. Okay, so a treasury bill would be like right here. CDs are guaranteed. They're insured by the FDIC. They're right here, meaning they have zero risk, essentially, but they also have very low returns. Okay. Now, what else do we have? We have bonds, we have stocks, and those stocks could be large cap, mid cap, small cap. I don't want you to get all confused or concerned that you don't know what the types of investment options are. Understand this, everything comes down to being risk versus reward. Now, according to the efficiency frontier, everything that's on the frontier is optimum. Anything that's under the frontier is not optimum, and anything outside of the frontier is impossible. Well, I argue that because the FIA is outside of the efficiency frontier. Why is that? Its risk is zero because it's a guaranteed product, but its returns are traditionally higher than muni and corporate bonds and closer to large cap stock returns. Pretty impressive. Well, I'm going to show you why that is. So if you're going to explain this to a client, it's very simple. You say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Client, I'm not a securities agent, okay? I don't sell things that can lose you money. I also don't work for a bank and sell you CDs. What I do is I protect your financial capital with something called an FIA, fixed index annuity. The FIA is the fastest growing retirement product in the United States for a reason. One of the reasons is it can offer you lifetime income. But the other reason is this, it offers decent returns with zero risk. And 
at the end of the day, isn't that what we're looking for? We're looking for fair, if not good returns without any sort of risk. That's the FIA. So everything that you have an option to purchase in retirement, everything from CDs to conservative bonds up to, you know, risky small cap stocks, everything has a risk versus a reward built into it. What I'm showing you has a higher amount of reward for a lower amount of risk. That's why we suggest it. Let's take another look. Why is this something that has zero risk but higher reward? How is that even possible? Well, let me show you this. This here is the investment vehicle pyramid, okay? The risk versus reward trade-off. So what's at the bottom of the pyramid? It has the lowest return but the lowest risk. In fact, at the foundation of the pyramid, you're going to find things that don't return much uh, in the way of uh, um, uh, internal rate return or investment return, but they also have zero risk. Some of these things are a U.S. insured, so an FDIC insured checking or savings account. What does your checking or savings account get? Zero. But it's not going anywhere, okay? Treasury securities, like I mentioned er earlier, a T-bill or a T-note or a T-bond. Okay, now those might have inflation risk if you do a T-bond that's out there 10, 20, 30 years, but it has no risk to principal, okay? That money's not going anywhere. Life insurance cash values, all right? We're going to talk about that. Life insurance cash values, zero risk. Not known for being very high, but zero risk. EE and AHH bonds, uh, certificates of deposit, you get the idea. Now, as we climb up the pyramid, we start to getting things that are much riskier, but have much better returns if you're willing to take that risk. High grade common stock, limited partnerships, actually investing, being a, 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 in a direct partnership investor. Um, futures contracts, futures is just gambling, right? You know, I think this is gonna go up or I think this is gonna go down. I think supplies gonna go up, I think supplies gonna go down, right? If we're doing futures trading. And then look here, gold and collectibles and puts and calls. What are puts and calls? We're gonna get to that in a second. So this makes sense, right? The foundation, no return or low return, no risk or low risk. And as we go up, the amount of risk gets much, much higher, but the amount of potential return gets much, much higher. So what I want to point out is this. What is an FIA? An FIA is a combination of two things on this pyramid, and that's what makes it so cool. First, the basic part of an FIA, about 97% of its DNA is simply a cash value of a new movie product, similar to a cash value of a life insurance product. It's a lump sum that is going to get a, a, an internal amount of return. So the best way to look at this is, is look at a fixed annuity or a MIGA, a multi-year guaranteed annuity. Right now I can go get a five-year MIGA that pays like 2.8%, okay? 2.8% guaranteed. What if the market goes up? I get 2.8%. What if the market goes down? I get 2.8%. What if the market goes sideways? I get 2.8%. What if the market implodes? I get 2.8%. You get my point. It's 2.8%. It's not sexy. It's not hard to understand. It's 2.8%. It's guaranteed and it's low return. But that's an example of an insurance product. But let's look up here. What about puts and calls, options? If you ever do option trading, you actually have to have an extra certification to do options, to engage in option trading, or to, to sell options to people. Options are a bit more complicated, but at the end of the day, a call option, right? A call option is if something moves up, I'm gonna buy a small piece of it with the right to buy more later and then sell it. So if an index goes up, a call option pays off and it can have a much higher multiple. But again, risk return. It's kind of like future, future telling, soothsaying, right? Clairvoyance, do we, or do we have Rasputin as a financial advisor and he says, here's what's gonna to happen to the index, it's gonna go up, right? You can actually, there, was, there were options inside FIAs that allow you to buy a put for the, option, for the index to go down. No one ever got into that and, and the options are hard to place, but you will see that from time to time. My point is this, something that is higher risk and higher reward combined with something that is zero risk and low reward. And that is what an FIA is. It's so neatly packaged in a tax deferred um, package with these exclusive priced options uh, that are available through some of these companies like a thing. 
That's what makes it so attractive. So essentially what it's saying is this, take that 2.8% that's secured. Instead of getting a 2.8% guarantee on your FIA, what's your guarantee normally? Zero. There's actually some out there that are giving you a guarantee of 1% or 1.6%, but a guarantee of zero. So instead of guarantee you 2.8%, they guarantee you zero, so your principal is safe. Now out of that principal, do they spend any of your money for options? No, they do not. They take that guarantee of 2.8% and instead of giving it to you, they purchase options. And they purchase them in a very effective way, a way that they have a lot of leverage. They go to the market with tens of millions of dollars and buy over the county counter proprietary oftentimes options. So if that index goes up, boom, that's where we see those big returns, 5%, 10%, we've even seen 20% returns on some of the two-year options. 20% returns. If you want to see those, email info at fflams.com and we can show them to you. Impressive stuff. Would you ever get a 20% return or even a 10% return or a 5% return with any of these things? No, you wouldn't. You would have to get up into the riskier portion of the investment period pyramid in order to see those. But because we have this ingenious way that insurance companies, annuity companies, have given you a foundation that is guaranteed, and then taking the interest and rather giving it to you, utilize that interest for your benefit in a way that you couldn't replicate to give you much higher upside potential. All of that inside an annuity wrapper, meaning it's tax deferred, meaning it avoids probate, means you name the beneficiaries, meaning that it's going to have, um, uh, be eligible for lifetime income at any point. You can turn it into lifetime income stream, right? Those are the benefits of the FIA, and this is how it's constructed. So hope that's not too confusing. Love your feedback. Email us at info at fflams.com. Let us know if this makes sense, if you have any additional questions. These are the types of things that... You know, as you're growing and understanding, for certain people, this makes sense. If you need these slides, you'd like to uh, have them sent over to you, we'd be happy to do that. You can present them to clients as you see fit. But I think most importantly, it's for you to gain an amount of confidence that we're selling a guaranteed product that has a higher upside potential than anything else out there. So go out there with the understanding and the background and the confidence that this is what we're producing or this is what we're selling. And um, it's a great fit for most retirees today. Thank you, everyone. Um, I was asked to, um, you know, do a little video uh, for you guys um, to kind of help, um, you know, with annuities because I know um, lately I've been trying to um, ask these questions a little bit more and, and helping a little bit more families with um, their retirement. So, you know, for me, um, one of the things that I have done um, is I've changed my in-home a little bit whenever I get down to, um, you know, the financial inventory sheet that we all use. Hopefully you guys are all using using this upside down. Um, but anyways, um, you know, I use that every single um, appointment. And whenever I first started, um, you know, I was a little hesitant to ask about, you know, uh, things other than, you know, insurance, savings, things like that, because I felt like maybe I was being a little too personal. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's, you know, hard to even um, get some people to, you know, give you the, the information about how much they're making per month. But, you know, I um, started to just ask a little bit more um, and a consistent way, um, everyone, you know, that I meet with. So when I get down to, do you have any other insurance? Um, I will simply, you know, also go say, do you have any old 401ks or savings? And sometimes if they give me a little bit of a pushback, I just tell them that I need this information to be able to um, properly give them the best um, recommendations for them. Um, because, you know, truthfully, when you're looking at somebody's financial situation and trying to come up with a plan for them, um, you know, you do need to know um, how much savings they have or if they do have any 
old 401ks. Um, current 401ks, it's a little bit different. Um, you know, you can get more into that um, when you learn more. But, you know, I always um, start with the old ones because people are usually have their 401ks um, if they've transferred a job or, or something like that. They're sitting somewhere and they could be losing money. Um, and so, you know, they're more like, oh, yeah, I do have an old 401k. So, you know, once I find out um, what they have, I'm able to, you know, discuss a little bit more with them um, at the end of the appointment because um, I'll continue on with my, um, you know, financial inventory sheet. And of course, you know, one of the reasons that I am there is basically to help them with um, insurance, whether it be, um, you know, funeral, final expense insurance or mortgage. Um, that's my primary focus. But, you know, sometimes, um, you know, families don't qualify for, you know, the insurance because, well, they'll qualify qualify, sorry, um, but they won't, um, you know, financially be able to maybe put that into their budget if they have like some sicknesses, maybe they're older. So, you know, whenever I, um, I start to go back into you know, their old 401ks or savings, I ask them what they're trying to do with that money. Um, what is the goal for that? Um, because, you know, with the theme, we do have some great products. Um, we have the, um, you know, Ascent Pro, which uh, I've been using a lot of, um, just because it's it's nice to be able to um, give families some extra income um, with their 401ks, and they're able to leave um, a death benefit to their family. So, you know, a lot of people, they'll be like, yeah, you know, I'm going to run out of this money in the next five years. And I'm like, well, I can show you a way that you're able to, um, you know, not do that. Do you, you know, want to have income for the rest of your life? Are you, you know, do you want to be stressed out? Um, you know, and, and a lot of times they do start to get stressed out, especially if you're dealing with some older families and they possibly, um, you know, are starting to look at it like, hey, you know what, like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to um, survive um, with this money if it's gone. So, you know, those are some of the things that I I try to talk to the families about, I try to figure out what their concern is basically with the money. What are they trying to do? Um, and then I just, you know, I offer them a, um, you know, a solution. I let them know, hey, you know what? Um, I, I can have someone uh, run an illustration for you, kind of let you see where this money can, um, you know, perform best for you. Because, you know, truthfully, this is all the money that you have, and you're not, um, you know, going to be able to get any more added to it, um, you know, at this point, because you're, you know, some of them are no longer working and able to contribute. So, you know, let's try to maximize your money. Let's have it grow. Let's have it work for you. So, you know, that's one of the things that I try to encourage families whenever I'm with is, you know, how to protect their money. And the other thing you guys have to understand is, you know, you go into the home and you are, you know, there to help them. And you may be the only person that goes in. They may never see a financial, um, you know, advisor on a, a yearly basis or you know, really know what to do. So, you know, when you do go into a home, just remember that, you know, asking these questions, even though sometimes I know I felt, you know, that they could be like, you know, intrusive or anything like that, just being comfortable and knowing that you're doing your job 100%, even by asking um, personal questions, 401k savings, you know, you're coming up with the best plan. And then don't be afraid to set up these appointments to BAMFAM. I mean, um, I have had several that, you know, have canceled and decided that they didn't want to do it, but that's okay. I just keep going and I keep asking the questions and you're going to find people that they do really want your help and they don't know where else to go. And, you know, the Athene products are really a great line of products to offer um, where you cannot lose any money. And that's really huge because sometimes if you're reviewing these statements, you can see these families are really losing money and they can't afford to lose any money, especially after they do retire. So, you know, I hope that helps, gives you a little bit um, tidbits on, you know, just some of the things that I'm doing. And, you know, I'm going to continue to ask in every single home, um, you know, about their financial retirement because I want to be able to protect it and I want to see, um, you know, what I can do to better their situation. So, all right, everyone, you have a great day. Bye. Hey everyone, Sean Ruggiero, Family First Life. We call this section Agent Profile. So we're gonna go through and meet some agents who are succeeding right annuities, um, whether that's hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars in annuities. They're helping people protect uh, what we call our financial capital, right? Life right. insurance protects human capital, we're protecting financial capital. So um, first agent, Brian Rollins, thanks for coming on. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Sean, for having me. I'm uh, very happy to be here, it's an honor. 
Well, thanks for, for being on. We, uh, uh, Bridget has kept me on task, so I have four questions I'm going to ask everyone. Start okay. with you. Brian, where are you from? How long have you been with Family First Life, and what did you do before this? Well, I'm originally from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. Uh, I moved to Seattle in 2000, got a job at Microsoft. Uh, basically, you know, when I got started, uh, my uh, military background, mm -hmm. uh, I Thank joined. You for your service. Yeah. yeah, and did 17 years. Hunted Russians, finally found one. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, I uh, joined Family First Life in October last year. I didn't start writing business till January of this year. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Um, and as we all know, the smartest people in the world live in Seattle. That's right? true. So, That'd you know, they, true. we got that working for us, right? That's right. Um, did you close, no one's going to watch this segment anymore, right? <laughs> did you close your first annuity appointment, or when did you close your first annuity appointment, and how many annuities have you closed since then? Okay, so uh, my first one I closed was in March of this year. Uh, it was for a very nice number, and I closed one within about six weeks afterwards. Uh, yeah. I've been working on a few others since then. Yeah, yeah, awesome. I think having many in the pipeline, not get too emotionally attached to any one annuity, is, is, is what makes it successful. That's right. Uh, rather than ride that roller coaster. Uh, question number three, Brian, what is the most important challenge you've overcome to sell your first annuity? I think the biggest challenge was because I really didn't know anything and I never really looked at the products at all. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first walked into a home and I had the opportunity and I knew I could, I could write one and help my client, it was overcoming uh, the task of actually going through the forms and getting it done. I actually mm -hmm. had to have uh, John, my upline, help me while I was with the client and to get it done. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. This wasn't scripted. Um, He's talking about he sold the annuity, but then going through it, um, I had it, no idea it, it what to flubbed do. him up. Yeah, and I made that mistake mistake on the life insurance side first time I ever did it. And so, if you're new, read an annuity, fill out an annuity application on yourself, and it would help tremendously because all it those does. questions would come out. So, yeah. excellent point. Thank you. Uh, last question: What would your primary piece of advice be for a brand new agent? I think that for brand new agents just starting out. First off, understand what you're doing and make sure you complete the full financial questionnaire. Ask them everything and the reason that you're asking them why. Because a lot of people don't want to give up that information because it's very private. Right. Once you understand that you're actually there to help them, uh, they will tell you the information. Yeah. And then don't jump on it and seize it then. That's something that you come back with. Excellent, excellent, excellent tip. Thanks so much for being Thank with guys. us here. Uh, if you need a copy of that financial inventory Brian's talking about, you can email info at FFLAMS.com. It's also uh, on your resources tab under FFLAMS.com. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.